This lock is quite old. It shouldn't be much of a challenge.
I need to find where the safe is hidden and lockpick it. This cupboard is an absolute mess. Several books have fallen from the shelves. It seems as though this cupboard can be moved. I'll give it a try. So, that's the lock I must open tonight. Let me see.
what a surprise. Another lock. Hmm. And I won't be able to pick it. I recall that precious key around Foley's neck. It might prove a decent fit. I suppose they hired me to only open the first lock. Let us wait for the thieves, trap them, and find out. Let us check the thieves' possible escape routes in the event that they are caught off guard by the police from the front door. Floor window is a perfect way to escape the police. This door is a perfect means of escape in an emergency. I wonder what this old chandelier is doing on the floor. It looks as though it was poorly attached. I suppose that the thieves already tried to open the lock with this formidable hammer, but they were unsuccessful. Although this window is high above the ground, it would be possible for one of the thieves to attempt to use it for their escape. This should be useful. This works very well. No one will escape through this window now. There is no ladder. If anyone falls here, he will need assistance to get out. This should be useful. solid rope.
The door is now blocked. This should be useful. If anyone takes the hammer, the rope will uncoil and make the chandelier fall. If he runs through the dining room and takes a sledgehammer to force open the door, the chandelier will knock him down. What a surprise! Another lock! Hmm, and I won't be able to pick it. I recall that precious key around Foley's neck. It might prove a decent fit. I suppose they hired me to only open the first lock. Let us wait for the thieves, trap them, and find out. The door is now blocked. This should be useful. Now, it's not an open hatch, just a nice carpet on the floor. I should walk carefully here, else my plan will be ruined. One step on these beads and our thief will go flying. I should walk carefully here, else my plan will be ruined. Any thief who finds his way upstairs will roll down very quickly. Now, if a thief runs through the kitchen, he'll pay a surprise visit to the cellar. The traps for my circus companions are all prepared. I can leave now, but I'll return later with Charles Foley and his companions.
Stop where you are! Where are they? Trapped, Watson, with your assistance. How so? Well, you sounded just like a real Bobby, my dear fellow. You startled them into the traps. I did? I assure you, Watson, it was quite an entertaining show. They will not escape the house now. You scum! And this is the pistol used for the murder in Half Moon Street. How do you know about that? Have you closed the case yet, Sherlock? Mycroft, what are you doing here? Did you follow me? Sherlock, it may seem that I used you, but you should be pleased to know that you have served our Queen well in this instance. So now, let us catch the big fish. But this man is not one of the merry men. No. Then why exactly are we here, Sherlock? This gentleman, Charles Foley, has been involved in a double murder and the hunter of a set of valuable antiques, the Hellenistic treasures, which disappeared in a theft many years ago. You're no better than the coppers! Holmes, that is incredible. The Hellenistic treasures. Indeed. Nothing but trifles. Where are the merry men? I don't know why you are asking me, Mycroft. They are yours to find. I'll see you soon, dear brother. Don't move, you flimflammer. The trap with the chandelier worked perfectly. Charles Foley has been knocked down. One of Foley's companions. He is unconscious. One of Foley's companions. He is unconscious.
Charles Foley. You committed the crime of premeditated murder and of theft. You will be severely punished for your deeds. You are pitiful, you Scotland Yard dog. Save your words for the gallows. I am sure the journalists will love them. I shall leave now, Watson. Gentlemen, please take our friends here into custody. Where are you going? I have unfinished business. I'll see you at Baker Street. Be careful with the lamps. Don't bring them too close to the barrels. Good evening, gentlemen. Who's there? That is of no importance. What matters is who you are and the plans that you have here. <laughs> so you can stop us from carrying them out? Eventually, yes. Hey, careful. You'll blow us all up. I'm listening. We are a group known as the Merry Men. But I suppose you knew that already. We are the men who've already lost everything of value in their lives. We are ruined shopkeepers. We are workers who were fired from their jobs. Honest people who were robbed. We were forced out from our homes and thrown onto the street. And all of this in the name of the so-called law. The laws that were set out by our government. The laws that make the commoners only more vulnerable and the wealthy more protected. We are not only from the British Empire. Some of us are from the New Lands, America, Australia, and we are many. But men, we are still, and we are merry for that we stopped being afraid. For those powers that be had done their best to plant the fear inside our souls, and we accepted it so easily. The fear advised us to keep our heads bowed. It prevented us from fighting. Bankers and politicians... They own our lives, our work, our bread, and they push us to compete between each other just to see who may serve them better. But in the end, they are the few, so they are weak. They are nothing without their titles. We should not fear them. Our so-called masters should fear us instead. The time has come for our group to stand tall. Our great and many merry men... We are going to blow up the London Stock Exchange. No life shall be lost. But ownerships, debts and property titles? They shall all be destroyed. They're only papers, after all. So many people will be freed over this night. That is a radical step to take. What result do you truly expect? Chaos. But soon people will understand that they are free and that they don't belong to anyone. They will be able to work for themselves, together, without letting the rulers dictate what to do, and finally justice will arise. What you are intending to do is a crime. It is not justice. How do you see justice, then? Kids go to prison for a loaf of dry bread. And how many lords do you see punished for stealing from their people, sending them to their deaths in mines or overseas to fight for land? Our masters wouldn't hear us. So now it's time to sing the song of the Merry Men. Will you let us do our duty? When people fight the order, they are too blind to see the consequences that throw society into chaos. I shall stop your actions, but not you. Run. Now!
So, you're interested in Russian literature now. Quite lately. It is an interesting book. I remember a few lines. Really? I tried reading it myself, but I had a hard time understanding it. Yes, Doctor. It's about intelligence. Sherlock, I vaguely recall one of the lines. Sometimes it takes something more than intelligence to act intelligently. Mm. There were also a few words along the lines of pain and suffering are always inevitable for a large intelligence and a deep heart. Mm. Tell me, Doctor, does my brother show any signs of pain or suffering? Uh, not that I know of. Because you see, Doctor, behind all of his masquerade, my brother does possess a deep heart. So deep that he does not recall where he places his love. Well, I'm sure that... Uh... His love and his duty that, in the first place, should be directed towards the Empire. For without it, we would be nothing. A country filled with uncivilized men. And the Empire needs order and discipline. It has no room for chaos. People who commit crimes, or at the very least intend them, deserve punishment, Sherlock. Without justice, there can be no civilization. But we serve the truth, not justice. Your truth, Doctor, that may prove immoral. Allowing people to terrorize London, destabilizing the whole Empire. Terrorize only the powers whom you serve, Mycroft. Not I, not Watson, not Mrs. Hudson, not Wiggins. Sherlock, the merry men are to be stopped. Not by me. You created the merry men. Stop them yourself. Only make sure that you don't create ten more merry men by arresting the one. Good night, Dr. Watson. Anything in the post, Watson? Any clients worthy of our attention? Only a second reminder from Mrs. Hudson about our new neighbor. She urges you to remove your... Oh, I don't care about that. Holmes, the lady who will be moving in shortly has requested the use of our spare room to place all of her boxes. Wait, what? A... a lady? Charles Foley, you were a witness to a double murder. You were standing next to Vercotti when Butler fired at your accomplice. The jeweler missed him, but they proceeded to kill each other with simultaneous shots. Even if your intention was to retrieve the stolen treasure, you did not intend to kill. I shall inform Inspector Lestrade of that fact, so your sentence should be the lighter. You are a fine gentleman, with your fake pity. I do what I think is right. It is never due to pity. Farewell, Foley. I shall leave now, Watson. Gentlemen, please take our friends here into custody. Where are you going? I have unfinished business. I'll see you at Baker Street. Be careful with the lamps. Don't bring them too close to the barrels. Good evening, gentlemen. Who's there? That is of no importance. What matters is who you are and the plans that you have here. <laughs> so you can stop us from carrying them out? 
Eventually, yes. Hey, careful. You'll blow us all up. I'm listening. We are a group known as the Merry Men. But I suppose you knew that already. We are the men who've already lost everything of value in their lives. We are ruined shopkeepers. We are workers who were fired from their jobs. Honest people who were robbed. We were forced out from our homes and thrown onto the street. And all of this in the name of the so-called law. The laws that were set out by our government. The laws that make the commoners only more vulnerable and the wealthy more protected. We are not only from the British Empire. Some of us are from the New Lands, America, Australia, and we are many. But men, we are still. And we are merry for that we stopped being afraid. For those powers that be had done their best to plant the fear inside our souls, and we accepted it so easily. The fear advised us to keep our heads bowed. It prevented us from fighting. Bankers and politicians. They own our lives, our work, our bread. And they push us to compete between each other, just to see who may serve them better. But in the end, they are the few, so they are weak. They are nothing without their titles. We should not fear them. Our so-called masters should fear us instead. The time has come for our group to stand tall. Our great and many merry men. We are going to blow up the London Stock Exchange. No life shall be lost. But ownerships, debts, and property titles? They shall all be destroyed. They're only papers, after all. So many people will be freed over this night. That is a radical step to take. What result do you truly expect? Chaos. But soon people will understand that they are free, and that they don't belong to anyone. They will be able to work for themselves, together, without letting the rulers dictate what to do, and finally justice will arise. What you are intending to do is a crime. It is not justice. How do you see justice, then? Kids go to prison for a loaf of dry bread. And how many lords do you see punished for stealing from their people, sending them to their deaths in mines or overseas to fight for land? Our masters wouldn't hear us. So now it's time to sing the song of the merry men. Will you let us do our duty? When the law serves only the few, it can no longer be trusted. Every man is equal, and he has a right to choose his own way. And I shall not stop you. So, you're interested in Russian literature now? Quite, lately. It is an interesting book. I remember a few lines. Really? I tried reading it myself, but I had a hard time understanding it. Yes, Doctor. It's about intelligence. Sherlock, I vaguely recall one of the lines. Sometimes it takes something more than intelligence to act intelligently. Mm. There were also a few words along the lines of pain and suffering are always inevitable for a large intelligence and a deep heart. Mm. Tell me, Doctor, does my brother show any signs of pain or suffering? Uh, not that I know of. Because you see, Doctor, behind all of his masquerade, my brother does possess a deep heart. So deep that he does not recall where he places his love. Well, I'm sure that... Uh... His love and his duty that, in the first place, should be directed towards the Empire. For without it, we would be nothing. A country filled with uncivilized men. I should leave now. Sherlock. Dr. Watson. Holmes, what just happened? What was that? The start of a new world. Anything in the post, Watson? 
Any clients worthy of our attention? Only a second reminder from Mrs. Hudson about our new neighbour. She urges you to remove your... Oh, I don't care about that. Holmes, the lady who will be moving in shortly has requested the use of our spare room to place all of her boxes. Wait, what? A... a lady? 